2014 UIM Nations Cup Championship kicked off its fourth season in spectacular Doha, Qatar, the self-styled powerboating capital of the world. Doha is truly unique, a city of stark and breathtaking contrasts, where a vibrant, age-old culture, history and tradition coexists alongside a modern hub of business, finance and tourism. You can visit the downtown souk and explore its maze-like streets and alleys, or you can head toward the skyscraper-studded city center that's pulsating day and night. Qatar is a cosmopolitan Middle Eastern metropolis where people from almost literally all over the world live and work side by side. There's something for everyone here, from adventure sports to shopping and nightlife. Qatar is also fast emerging as a major international sports destination. Besides the Nations Cup, the city also hosts the UIM Aquabike and F1H2O World Championship Grand Prix. And in 2022, Qatar will host the FIFA World Cup. Six teams, 11 boats and 14 drivers lined up for the second ever UIM Nations Cup Grand Prix of Qatar, the first round of the 2014 season. The home team, Team Qatar, once again features Khalid al Kuwari, a match race maestro, racing in his fourth Nations Cup event for Qatar. Up alongside al Kuwari is Abdullah Golam, who enters the Nations Cup for the first time. Now it's an excellent experience. I mean, for the first time, I think I did quite well. My target is to finish the race safely and then take it step by step. Team Italy is back with a talented Stefano Pauletti leading the squad alongside Marco Gambi. They competed in Abu Dhabi last year, finishing runner-up, but they're in for the whole season here and keen for the world title. Last year's Qatar Grand Prix winners, Team Russia, are back alongside newcomers, Belarus. Six of their seven drivers competed last year and this year they're joined by youngster Andre of Chinikov. The manager is former F1 H2O racer Stanislav Kurtzinovsky of Russia. I even manage two teams now, the Team Belarusia and Team Russia. So I mean, like a team the, the director, we have seven pilots. We train them in Italy and they participated in the National Cup last year, as you know. And we continue this program. So we have uh, great plans in the future. We plan to participate in Rouen with the two boats and we go into Augustov and we're going to continue National Cup and uh, so uh, we have very good uh, talented uh, drivers and yeah so a lot of job and a lot of fun in the future. Sure to cause a stir here in Doha is Team Malaysia which features two brother drivers Alfian Bin Kadri and Mohamed Afende Bin Kadri both of whom have previous Nations Cup experience when they competed in Corfa Gun in 2012. Everybody has equal boats, equal engines, so it shows that how competitive the drivers are. So on my first outing, I finished third, so it's a good thing. So I'm looking forward for a good result this time. I think we should be doing good. We can be up there with the front runners and maybe give the hometown of Qatar something to cheer about in the competition. Team Lebanon is back as well, featuring the Brazilian Lebanese driver Lebos Chaguri, who's been a Nations Cup regular. The Grand Prix started off with the draw to see which teams and drivers would get which boats and propellers. These are stock boats, all at the same steering wheels and transmission, and teams can only customize the appearance of their boat with stickers or advertising. They all use the same stock Mercury Optimax engines and also the same two kinds. The propellers.
the time trials would not only determine the starting lineup of race one, they would also determine the top eight pairings in the match race, with first pairing eight. Earlier in the day, strong winds and choppy seas played havoc with the race schedule, forcing officials to abandon the one-hour official qualifying session after just 15 minutes. Uh, we're just freezing the session for now. Water is too choppy. It's going to be too dangerous for the drivers, so all the boats are called back into the dock and on the shore. In the afternoon, the remaining 45 minutes of the time trials was completed, even though conditions still weren't perfect with choppy seas. Mohammed bin Qadri was not complaining. Uh, it's rough today, a lot of roll, but I think it's going to be fun. We're going to be dancing on the water a lot today. Woohoo! In a closely contested time trial, six of the 11 drivers posted times within seven tenths of a second of each other. Team Malaysia's Mohammed bin Qadri ran the most laps of any driver, eventually coming in fourth just ahead of Team Qatar's experienced Khalid al Kuwari. Mohammed's brother Alfian bin Qadri managed sixth place beating both Team Russia's Andrei Panyushkin by just five hundredths of a second, as well as Konstantin Ustinov, the Russian team having to settle for seventh and eighth place. But there was drama as Alfian bin Kadri barrel rolled 20 minutes into the session, bringing out the yellow flag. He was unhurt as he brought the boat back to the pontoon, but it was pretty badly beat up. Doctor. Doctor is there. All right, just go and have a word with him. Yeah, my radio said one more second to pole. So, one more second too much, I guess. Water condition's good, boat's good. Just got caught by a slight, I don't know where it came from. But everything else is good, I'm good. I'm gonna see the doctor now. Lebanon's Lebos Chaguri also went out immediately after the restart at the same corner. Chaguri was not happy, and the damage on the boat would rule him out of the rest of the Grand Prix. Newcomer Abdullah Kolam was more than three seconds behind eighth placed Ustinov. The big sensation was Team Belarus, with both drivers making the top three. Of Chinnikov second with a time of 50.03 seconds, and Vandeshev third with a fastest lap of 50.13 seconds. Try as they might, they had no answer for the pace of Stefano Pauletti of Team Italy, who was the only driver to break the 50 second mark. Winning pole with a time of 49.72 seconds. His Team Italy teammate Marco Gambi had problems and ended up in 11th spot. In the match race, Two boats line up against each other for the best of three runs on a two-pin alternate course with one short lap and one long lap. The first big matchup was between two-time former match race winner Khalid al Kouari of Qatar and Stefano Pauletti of Team Italy. Pauletti got the better of al Kouari and then moved on into the final with a closely fought semi-final win over Belarus driver Roman Vandeshev. On the other side of the draw, Konstantin Ustinov of Team Russia made short shrift of Qatari Abdullah Golam, before then going on to beat Malaysia's Mohamed Afan. <laughs> Bin Kadri, followed by Marco Gambi in the semi-finals, 
whom he beat on a near photo finish in the most tightly fought matchup yet. In the battle for third place, Roman Vandeshev edged out Marco Gambi before the two youngest drivers, Pauletti and Ustinov, went at it for the match race title. In the first heat, it was a close fought race, but Pauletti came out trumps. In heat two, the tables were turned, and it was Ustinov who forced the final to a decider. Heat three was too close to call, both drivers going all out and turning tight. But in the end, it was Pauletti who held his nerve and came out with a well-deserved win. The match race results put Italy at the top of the standings with 43 points, giving them a seven-point advantage over Team Russia, with newcomers Belarus a further point adrift in third. With stormy conditions forecast, UIM officials had to decide whether to postpone the sprint races to the next day. Well, for today uh, we have uh, extreme weather conditions. Uh, I take the decision to cancel so far the free practice. Our time frame is until 4 o'clock. If we can start something at 4 o'clock, we still have uh, light, uh, sunlight to, to make uh, at least one of the races. This is the, the, the situation against the weather, we cannot do nothing and I cannot release the drivers with these water conditions. So all the safety aspects must be respected and we are waiting for the, the weather to help us. The conditions didn't get any better and the races were rescheduled for the following morning. Weather conditions were suitable for racing the next day and teams were ready for sprint race one. Team Lebanon was unable to start the race as was Abdullah Kolam of Team Qatar, reducing the starting grid to nine boats. The race will be run on a 1.6 kilometer, four pin rectangular circuit with two long and two shorter straightaways. The race is on. Stefano Pauletti and Paul having a slow start as the two Belarusian boats to his right jump to the lead literally from the get-go with Andrei Ovchinikov in number 10 first to the commitment boy. Pauletti gets some momentum going to climb back up into second ahead of Dmitry Vandeshev in the Belarus number 9 boat. Pauletti has the inside lane He's right up there neck and neck with Ovchinikov as they lead the fleet of nine boats down to boy number two. Ovchinikov in the lead there on that tricky boy number two with a match race winner Pauletti right on his tail. Mohammed bin Kadri creeping up on Kitashev in boat number four, but Kitashev accelerates and takes on Dmitry Vandeshev in number nine before Vandeshev pushes ahead to ward off the Russian. Mohamed bin Kadri keeps his sights on Vandeshev while Vandeshev's teammate continues to lead the race but under close pursuit by Pauletti. Behind them, Vandeshev and Malkin continue to lock horns in their battle for fourth. The close friends are now bitter rivals out there but Vandeshev stays ahead of the Russian. Further back, Alfian bin Kadri in the number 11 Malaysian boat who's followed by Khalid al Kuwari of Qatar who's locked in a duel with Mikhail Kitashev of Russia. Kitashev makes a move on al Kuwari down on boy number three as the two go neck and neck across the 300 meters straight away to boy number four. al Kuwari dropping back. In the lead, Ovchinikov coming up on the number one boy, enjoying the clear, clean, fast waters ahead of him. Coming around the turn, Dmitry Malkin gives chase to Dmitry Vandeshev of Belarus down the 500 meter chute to boy three. Malkin hits a crest and his equipment goes flying. Condition oh. remain very tough. 
Malkin keeps up the pressure on Van Dushev as they come down to boy number two. Malkin on the outside, seeing if he can get some extra speed on the clean water. Van Dushev stays tight on the inside as the two enter a drag race to boy three. Malkin pulling ahead, Van de Schaaf staying cool on the inside, knowing he has the distance advantage. But Malkin moves ahead, he's faster than Van de Schaaf. his outside line pays off and he moves up to third. Things get worse for Van de Schaaf as Mohammed bin Kadri in the Malaysian number 12 boat closes the gap with a Belarusian and nudges ahead into fourth. A boat has gone over. It's the Russian number three, Mikhail Kitashev. Russian manager Kurtsinovsky looks on as the choppy waters claims a boat, reducing the field to eight boats. The Osprey rescue team brought an unharmed Kitashev back in as the race went under a yellow flag. The yellow flag bunch up is an opportunity for drivers to get the jump on boats up front with radio men having the crucial role of timing their driver's acceleration perfectly. UIM race commissioner Luis Ribeiro gives the green flag, the race is restarted. Ovchinikov will have one eye on Stefano Pauletti behind him. Behind them, Mohamed bin Kadri in a three-way duel with the two Dimitris, Malkin of Russia and Fandishev of Belarus. The battle continues between the two Dimitris, Malkin on the outside, Fandishev on the inside, Vandeshev hugging those turns tight while Malkin looks for some pace on the relatively clear outside waters. The two are locked in a dead heat. Malkin pulls ahead of the Belarus driver, opening a four boat length lead to move up a spot as Mohammed bin Kadri also gains on Vandeshev. But Vandeshev keeps up his pace on the inside. Vandeshev goes wide and Bin Kadri moves in sharp to try and sneak in on boy number two. The two go neck and neck around the boy and enter a 500 meter drag race to boy three. This time, Mohammed Bin Kadri has the advantage. Ahead of them, Paul Letty makes another move on Ovchinikov. Paul Letty nudges ahead, he's on the inside. Can he hold off the Belarusian? Pauletti has it. Pauletti into the lead for the first time in the race in lap 16. The Italian now in command with eight laps left in the race. It's been a titanic race long battle between these two of Chinnikov holding the advantage for 16 laps before Pauletti found his chance and made his move to take the lead and gain the advantage for Italy. Ovchinikov is feeling the pressure now as Malkin, the four-time World Endurance Pneumatics champion from Russia, closes in on the Belarusian. Malkin goes wide, but he has the speed and he pulls away from Ovchinikov, bumping the Belarusian down to third. Great racing from Malkin. Before Ovchinikov can scramble back, he suddenly has Mohammed bin Kadri on his starboard side. Team Malaysia tells him to push, push, push. Mohammed bin Kadri giving it everything he has, but Ovchinikov not backing down either. Bin Kadri accelerates on the turn. He's now moved into third on the 525 meter top straightaway, and then down the 255 meter shot to boy two. As for Paul Letty, his lead is looking comfortable, unaware of the three-way struggle behind him, as Ovchinikov drops from first to fourth place within just a few laps. Bin Kadri in third opens his lead with Ovchinikov, whose troubles are compounded as his teammate Fandashev moves to pass him. Behind them, Alfian Bin Kadri makes another attack on Al Khwari as the two duke it out for sixth spot. The all Belarus battle continues between Vandeshev and Ovchinikov. But up ahead, Dimitri Malkin flips his boat. Malkin in the water. That's another yellow flag. The Osprey rescue team there in a flash. Malkin unhurt, but Russia's hopes are shattered. As the Russian boat is towed out, he had just three laps left. What a shame. It's still too, too rough and they've lost the pickle fog and uh, it caused to the to the crash because they said the boat became inst uh, unstable and touched the, touched the water and barrels with this yeah so <laughs> So 
upset because my driver did so well, started from eight and then he would run two in just two, two three laps. I don't know why. And that just went like. With time running out and laps winding down, UIM Race Commissioner Luis Ribeiro decided the race would end on a yellow flag. Qatar UIM General Secretary Sami Abu Sheikha raises the checkered flag. Sprint Race 1 winner Stefano Pauletti of Italy. A runner up is Team Malaysia's Mohamed bin Kadri, with Avchinikov taking third ahead of his teammate Bandeshev. Following Sprint Race 1, teams completed their final preparations and after a brief interlude, the boats headed back out for Sprint Race 2. Seven boats lined up for Race 2, Paul Letty and Paul, Mohamed bin Kadri second, Dmitry Vandeshev stepped in for Ovchinikov in third and his brother Roman Vandeshev beside him. A better start this time from Paul Letty. Khalid Al Khwari shot up the field on the first turn at the commitment boy as Pauletti led the field down the 255 meters straightaway to boy number two. Mohammed bin Kadri of Malaysia kept his line in second place behind Pauletti as the boats came around the turn. Great start from Khalid Al Khwari, the Qatari shooting up into third place behind the number 12 Malaysian boat. Bin Kadri goes wide out of Pauletti's wake to try and get some speed to keep up with the Italian. Behind Al Khwari, Roman Vandeshev edges ahead of Alfian Bin Kadri. Mohamed Bin Kadri tries to keep within striking distance of Pauletti, while behind him, Roman Vandeshev closed the gap with Khalid Al Khwari, trying to overtake the Qatari on the 500 meters straightaway to boy number three. The Belarus drivers saw his chance on boy number one, the two going neck and neck on the shortest straight in the course, Al Khwari on the inside, Roman Vandeshev fast on his outside, Al Khwari fending off Roman Vandeshev, but for how long? Paul Letty has been having a dream event, winning the time trials, match race and sprint race one, and now he's on course for a clean sweep, impressive stuff. But first he has to ward off the Malaysian challenge because Mohamed bin Kadri is not about to settle for second. Things are heating up behind them as Roman Vandeshev has a go at Al Khwari on turn boy number two, but Al Khwari successfully fends off yet another challenge. Stefano Pauletti has a very close call there, but he just manages to keep his boat down and take that tricky boy at the bottom without letting Bin Kadri through. He dealt with that very well, but Bin Kadri now closing in, knowing Pauletti's not infallible. Behind them, the fight continues between Al Khwari and Roman Vandeshev. The Belarus driver makes his move on the outside of boy one, but Al Khwari holds on on the inside before going wide. Inside out, there you go. Roman Vandeshev tucks in nice and tight. Now this is his chance. Al Khwari has a speed, but Roman Vandeshev has the inside advantage now. And the Belarusian has it. His race-long effort to overtake Al Khwari bears fruit on lap nine. The intense battle between Dmitry Vandeshev and Alfian Bin Kadri is pushing them both closer to Al Khwari as the three of them head to boy number three. Dmitry Vandeshev reclaims fifth spot, coming very close on that turn, pushing Alfian Bin Kadri even wider. Alfian Bin Kadri tries to strike back, but Dmitry Vandeshev holds on. The clock is ticking away, the laps are winding down, Mohamed Bin Kadri knows his chances are lessening, but with the quality of driving we've seen from Paul Letty, he'll just have to hope for a freak mistake. But Paul Letty is driving with a level of experience and self-confidence that belies his years knowing that a single lapse of concentration could cost him and Team Italy dearly. Oh. 
the titanic struggle between Dimitri van der Scherf and Alfie and Bing Kadri continues. And Bing Kadri takes that fifth position back from the Belarus driver. Roman van der Scherf is looking comfortable in third place. Alfian Bin Kadri sets his sights on Al Kuari as the Malaysian tries to overtake the Qatari. The two go neck and neck down that straight, barely anything between them, and Al Kuari uses his inside lane advantage to hold on to his position. The final lap, Bin Kadri's chance never came. And Stefano Pauletti completes a clean sweep of the event with a sprint race to win. Great stuff from this promising Italian talent. Team Malaysia well pleased with Alfian's performance even though Al Kuari managed to come in fourth, which was some consolation for Team Qatar. Marco Gambi finishes the race in seventh, earning Team Italy crucial points. The final team standing sees Malaysia nap third place with 100 points. And the Grand Prix of Qatar goes by the narrowest of margins to Team Belarus, who beat Team Italy by just one point. What a result. Disappointment, however, for Team Russia. That concludes the first exciting round of the 2014 UIM Nations Cup World Series. See you in Putrajaya, Malaysia for an incredible round two.